So we have uh, row bulk. Hi. Uh, row bulk is um, 1.75 grams per centimeter cube. And uh, water content is 10.5. And the GSO row is 2.68. Hi. So here. So they are asking the porosity. Porosity is the question, right? So we know what is water content and we know the GA. So as soon as we see these two data, we know, right? W into GS is equal to S into E, right? So we know this relationship. So the issue again is uh, the second question is asking the degree of saturation. So we don't know both the parameters S and E, right? For so somehow, if we find S O E, whatever the parameter, we can go to the other one, right? So the other data is given here is the bulk density, right? So if we know the bulk density, we can find the dry density, right? So dry density is rho bulk divided by 1 plus W, right? So we can write this one. At the same time, right? We know that rho dry is also equal to GS into rho W over one plus E. So these are already proven equations. The only thing is you have to keep this in mind. So typically these will be in our mind because of the standard proctor test. So triangle proctor test is revolving around these equations. So this will be now mine, right? So rho bulk, rho bulk is 1.75, right? Over 1 plus. So this is this water content, you have to write it in decimal places, not in percentage. So if you change to decimal places, it is 0 0.105, right? That is equal to GS is 2.68. And rho, we are now using gram per centimeter units, these units. So gram per centimeter cube, we know uh, rho w is 1 over 1 plus e. Right? So once you solve this, you can find the value of e. So e is equal to nearly 0 0.692. Right? So once we know e, we can find n, that is, E over 1 plus E. So that is 0 0.692 over 1.692. So that is 0 0.409. So approximately it is 0 0.41. Right? So the answer is option B. Right? So the next part, next part is S. So S is fairly easy, we can use this one, right? So S is equal to WGS by E. So W we know it's 0 0.105 into GS is 2.68 over 0 0.692. So it is, again, uh, the value is somewhat closer to 0 0.407. So this is in decimal places. So when you convert it into percentage, it's nearly 41 percentage. So again, option B. Right? Okay, are you all okay with this? Any issues in this particular part? Right. So you have to remember the equation rho bulk equal to GS plus S into E over 1 plus E into rho W. 
So this is the equation. When it is dry, S is zero, right? When it is saturated, S is one. So you have to substitute that particular value and find the equation for this raw dry. Only this equation and this equation. These two equations are needed and the other one is this one. So these are typically the equations which we use in proctor test. So if you remember proctor test properly, so we can handle this question easily within one or two minutes. Okay, fine. Okay, then we'll move on to the next question. So give me a minute, I'll share the screen. Right, next one, next question is a statement question, right? So uh, most of the students might uh, be afraid of a statement question, but uh, it's very easy, right? So you have to just be uh, tricky while handling these uh, statement questions, right? So let's see. So the following uh, two equations are used when computing the variation of person passing versus particle size during a hydrometer test. Okay, so one is the particle size equation and the other one is the person passing, right? So which of the following statements are true, right? So the first question, first statement, that this person, dispersing agent does not influence the particle size. It's correct, right? So the disp uh, dispersing agent affects the person passing, right? Dispersing agent always affects the person passing because dispersing agent changes the density of the, our solution, right? Our so, so to counter that, there is an, uh, correction done here, right? That is this RD, right? So this RD value in the K equal 100 rho S over M times rho S minus one into RD, this value RD value is taken including the density correction. So that is for the person passing part, not for the dispersing agent and the particle size part. So obviously statement A is wrong, right? Sorry, uh, uh, does not influence. So they have said it correctly, does not influence. So the statement A is correct, right? So if A is correct, you can directly omit option B, option C, right? So two options are gone, only A, D, N, C, uh, E are remaining, right? Uh, the next part, next statement. The person passing is computed relative to the mass passing 0 0.063 millimeter CU. Yeah, obviously. Right? So we, we take what are the mass of soil which passes through 0 0.063 millimeter sieve and uh, we do the hydrometer test. So obviously we are calculating relative to that, right? So that is obviously correct. So B is correct. So if B is correct, the only option is option A. So you can directly move on to the third question if you are doing this paper in your exam. Right? So no need to consider and read C and D in this case, but uh, we'll just uh, go through it also quickly. Uh, the amount of soil in suspension, right, at a given time reflects the person passing relative to the C size. No. So if it has passed, it would have settled down. That is person passing, right? Passing means it has passed the C U. So if it is, it has passed C, it would have gone down and it would have settled. It would be at the bottom. But they are saying that the amount of soil in suspension, in suspension means it is still in the solution. So it, it is giving the percent retaining, not the percent passing. So option C is directly, right? Uh, directly wrong, right? So it's obviously saying the other way around. So next thing, viscosity in NETA depends on the quantity of solids in suspension at a given time, right? Viscosity in NETA depends on the quantity of solid. Oh, viscosity depends on the temperature and the fluid properties, not what is dissolved in that, okay? So D is also wrong. So obviously the answer is A and B. 
right? So option A, the fourth one, right? Just give me a second, there is something going on. Anyone, did anyone send me any chat? I saw some alert. Ah, oh, no, nothing, right, we'll continue. Okay, the fourth question, right? The fourth question is, it's a very tricky question, fairly very easy one, but the way of asking the question is a bit tricky, so someone might get confused, right? Uh, we'll see. The increase in vertical stress due to lowering of groundwater table from 3 meter to 5 meter elevation, right? So, they are lowering the groundwater table. Groundwater table is at 3 meter due to some process, some dewatering process or some, some any other way, right? The water table has reduced to 5 meter, right? So, they are asking the uh, variation in the stress, right? So let's see, right? I'll quickly draw a diagram and I'll just uh, talk through that. Right, so we'll clear the board. Right. So if we see the figure, right? So our figure, let's see a zero meter, right? At three meter, the first initially the water table is at three meter, then the water table is at five meter, right? So be, below here it is clay and gamma is twenty kilonewton per meter cube. Right? And here it's sand and the gamma is unit weight is 17 kilonewtons per meter cube right so water table is initially here first the water table is here then the water table is here and the second situation right so fairly simple right so whatever the change you are doing to the water table it does not mean the total stress is varied right the total stress does not vary here so we know total stress is directly gamma times h right so total stress sigma is gamma times h. So what, wherever you consider a soil element, so some are here, right? Let's say if you consider soil, the sigma does not change by changing the pore water pressure, right? Sorry, uh, by changing the height of the water table. So what happened to the pore water? U. So U is gamma W times h, right? So sigma dash is equal to sigma minus U. This is the effective, effective stress principle. So whatever the change happens to pore water pressure will directly affect the effective stress. So, so what is the change in the pore water pressure? What is the change in delta U? It's 9.81 times 2. That is, you are changing the water table by 2 meter. So what is the total change? It is 19.62 kilopascals. So this is the change you are creating by lowering the water table from particular height, three meter to the other height, five meter. So this change will occur in the effective stress also, right? So what is the answer so that? Answer is the first answer, option A. So anyone who is uh, finding this difficult, I heard a mic. If your my if your voice is not clear, you can chat. Okay. It seems fine. So we'll move to the. Next part.
right question 5 right so as soon as you see a stress element right most of the people might think we have to draw a more circle right so without drawing a more circle and using your imagination you can handle this question right so i am not going to uh, so say that i am not i'll show the more circle method also but more than the more circle method i want you all to uh, i'll just do it quickly right using the using your uh, imagination i mean you you should draw the more circle in your mind without a paper right if you can do it quickly draw it in a paper it's not an issue but without that i want you all to do this one, right uh, for the state of plane stress in figure a5 the major principal stress so they ask in a major principal stress right so when you see there is a direct stress of 80 kilo pascal and there is a other direct stress of 40 kilo pascal right and the shear stress is 20 right right so if you imagine this coordinate in the tau sigma plane right i mean the sigma tau plane right you can think properly and see that your radius would be square root of 20 squared plus 20 squared right so i am doing this without any sort of writing right with the use of my calculator right i'll just uh, i'll just speak through this first and i'll just Uh, draw a more circle and explain this also right so my radius is 20 root 2 and my center is 60 because one point is at 40 and another point is at 80 the so center the center would be at 60 right so my center is 60 my radius is 20 root 2 so what is my major principal stress 60 plus 20 root 2 so 60 plus 20 root 2 if you just calculate in your calculator 60 plus 20 root 2 it's 88.28 right so the answer is first answer so without using your pen with the help of your calculator you can directly find out the answer right so i'll just quickly run through the calculation using the board also right right so what was our stress element right. our stress element here we had 80 right here we had a clockwise shear of 20 and here anti clockwise and here 40 right so if we take a sigma tau plane right right so at one point there would be 40 at another point there would be 80 so i am taking uh, the compression stress as positive right compression positive and clockwise moment i mean clockwise shear can you all please uh, mute yourselves right so i'll get a point here this is 20 and another point minus 20 right so here so if we say our first coordinate would be here So this is our first coordinate, and the second coordinate is this one, right? So if we connect these two, so our center, right? This would be sixty, right? I hope you all can understand how it is sixty, right? So it's easily sixty because of the midpoint, right? Both are equilateral triangle, sorry, both are congruent triangles. Congruent triangle means similar triangle, so obviously this is sixty. so this distance is 20 and this distance is 20 so my radius r is 20 root 2 by the cross theorem right so what would be the more circle right i am just doing a drawing rough sketch so my more circle would be something like this in this 
red dots right red dots right so we have it just imagine this as a circle right so what would be this coordinate sigma maximum sigma maximum is 60 plus the radius right t plus 20 root 2 so that is 88.28 kilopascal right so the answer a Please, please my uh, mute yourselves. Someone's mic is still on, so I can regularly check and uh, mute everyone. Nice. So done. It's fairly simple. So anyone who is having an issue with that mind calculation, so the only thing is you have to draw this diagram. You have to imagine this more circle. Right. This small circle should be in your mind. So that this entire calculation done without any writing. Anyone, if you have any issues, please ask now in this small circle. So seems like nothing, right? So the next thing, for the state of principal plane described in figure A5, the angle between the horizontal plane and the plane of major principal stresses. So they're asking the angle now, right? So now I'll just show it this with this figure itself, right? So the plane, the horizontal plane, right? The horizontal plane is this point. This is your horizontal plane's point. So this is the particular plane. And what is the plane of your major principal stress? That is this one, right? So this angle is 45 degree, obviously. 345 degree. If it, if it is 45 degree in more circle, what is the actual angle? So actual angle alpha is 45 by two. So it is 22.5 degree if you are following your typical strength of material idea, right? You can do this in the imagination also. If you have this triangle in your mind, as I did earlier, you can directly find out because it's 20 and 20, so it's 10, 45. So 10 theta is equal to one, so theta 45. So half of that theta is 22.5, right? Be careful, it's 22.5. Again, 45 is also given as option, so don't get confused. So again, answer A. Any problem? Good. No one has an issue, so all are fine with soil mechanics. All right. So the next part, right? So here I've completed six questions. The question number seven: the coefficient of permeability K of a sandy soil at 28 degrees Celsius is 0.02. Uh, what would be the value of K expressed at the standard temperature considered? The table below gives the variation of viscosity with temperature, right? What is the standard temperature? We know the standard temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, right? So they are asking the K at 20. K20 20 is the question, right? So we know K, uh, we know K28, 0 0.02, but we don't know the viscosity at 28 degrees Celsius, right? So there's a relationship between the viscosity and the permeability, right? So what is that relationship? It's inversely proportional. So we know that 
K permeability is inversely proportional to meter, right? Once meter reduces, permeability increases, right? So K20 is proportional to 1 over meter 20 and K28 is proportional to 1 over meter 28. So if we divide both these two, so K20 by K28 is equal to meter 28 by meter 20. So K20 is equal to meter 28 by meter 20 into K28, right? So meter 28, we don't know the value. We'll figure it out. But it's meter 20, it's 1.004 and K20, it's 0 0.02. Only this parameter is missing. That is meter 28 is missing, right? So there are three values to you. Using the chart, we know meter 30 is uh, 0 0.801 and meter 20 is 1.004. So you can calculate meter 28, right? So meter 28 is equal to 1.004 plus, what is meter 30? It's 0 0.801 minus 1.004 by 10. I mean this there's a difference, right? Be between these two values, there's a difference for 10 degrees Celsius. So I'm dividing by 10 and multiplying by eight. I want to find for eight, right? So this is meter 20. So 20 plus eight, 28. So the value is, if you calculate, you're getting a value of um, 0 0.984. So if you observe properly, I didn't consider the 10 to the power minus six power. Right? Because when you are dividing both these two values, that power would cancel out. So that's why I didn't consider that power. Right? So here, if you solve this, the value is 0 0.196 centimeters per second. Answer is uh, 3. Right? So that's it, All right? Fairly simple calculation, constant head, practical directly. So the next question is uh, based on your particle size, right? So when you see here, uh, which of the following statements are true regarding the two soils described in table A8, right? Uh, let's say I'll just reduce this one. Okay, right. Soil A is well graded, coarse to medium, sandy gravel. Right, there are so many data, so many things are described, right? So, well graded. So, what is the condition for well graded? So we need to know the CU coefficient of uniformity. We know to we need to know the coefficient of curvature. Curvature should be one to three, and uh, uniformity should be greater than four for sand and uh, sorry for uh, for gravel it's greater than four and for sand it's greater than six. So there are so many parameters you need to describe whether it is well graded. So we don't have every parameters here, right? Uh, the other condition is fine should be 0 to 5, so that is fine. L graded means fine should be 0 to 5, so that, that part is okay. Other than that, we don't know other information. So we can't say with 100% uh, accuracy that it is well graded. So A statement is in question mark, so we can't say that, right? So what do you see? We'll move on to other statements and we'll come back to A, right? A is, in my opinion, we can't say, right? right? About well graded, right? Uh, what about the gravel part, right? So when you see, so what is the gravel percentage in A, right? So the gravel size is from 63 mm to 2 mm, that is from passing 2 mm to 63 mm, it is gravel, right? So what is the percentage of gravel? It's 76 percentage. How do you calculate that it has 76? Passing 2 mm, percent smaller means it is passing, right? 
if it is not smaller it can't pass so person pass smaller is equal to person passing so 24% is passing through 2 mm so what is retaining 76% so 76% is gravel and 24% is sand right so they can say it as a sandy gravel right so medium to coarse is according to the size right so it can be sandy gravel but we can't say whether it is well graded so a is an question mark we'll keep with that and we'll see the other one right uh, soil b is a fine grain soil so if it should be if it is should be fine grained more than 50 percentage should be passing through 63 microns sieve so when you three when you see the 63 microns sieve only 34 percent is passing so it is obviously b is wrong right so the next one soil a all right we'll uh, remove some options so if b is wrong first option gone and second option gone right so soil a may be identified as gs and gw we can't say because we can here the fine percentage is less than 0 sorry it means it's less than 5 percentage if you are using dual symbols it should be between 5 to 12 percentage right so if it is between 5 to 12 percentage you can use the dual symbol so here that is not the case right so c is again wrong so you can omit option b and option c and option e so the only thing remaining is option d right let's see whether statement d is correct uh, the fines in soil b have more silty i uh, uh, have more silty than clay right so let's see what is the silt percentage a uh, clay percentage is 7% so out of 34% of fines 7% is clay so obviously 27% is silt so it's correct right it's more silty than clay clay is 27 sorry clay is 7 and silt is 27 so option, uh, statement a and statement d are correct so option d anyone having issue with this I seems like fine. So the next question, question number nine. uh again uh, statement question right right question 9 yeah which of the following statements are true uh toughness of uh, soil thread near plastic limit is a measure of soil's ability to re-roll several times right uh yeah you can say that right toughness means um if the soil is tough right you can re-roll it several times right if it is less tough it will break down easily right so using the toughness we can define plastic plasticity and the plastic limit also right so whether it is high plastic limit soil or whether the plastic limit is low right you would have done these practicals right so i think you would have have a proper practical knowledge when you were handling this right uh next one dilatancy reaction is high in silty soil obviously we know that dilatancy reaction is high in silty soil because if it is 100% pure silt no clay so it's easily it will show dilatancy so b is correct and a is correct uh c part high plasticity soil shows a high dry strength yes absolutely right if the plasticity is high it has a very high dry strength 
we know that right we know that how it happens you would have uh, done a test in uh, the lab also right it would be very hard to break right it's very high, uh, high strength due to its plasticity because of the adsorbed water and the bondings right it's very hard right and the d option high dry strength indicates the presence of adsorbed water right yeah right if it is high dry strength absolutely there is clay content high clay content so if there is high amount of clay content there is adsorbed water there is presence of adsorbed water right in the dry state if the if the sample is dried in an oven or in an air uh, air drying process if it is dried off at that time there won't be no water but in its normal state there will be absolutely high amount of adsorbed water in that so all the statements are correct here right so the next thing right uh, for the all syllabus people the next question next two questions uh, next all three questions would be familiar for the new syllabus people these things are not available in the in your books right so i'll just quickly run through these questions and uh, we'll move to the essay part right can you please move, move your mic i can't regularly check that okay right here so here if you see right for the all syllabus people they know there are some equations for k0 ka and kp right so typically uh, k0 k and kp these things are some sort of coefficients right there are different states in soil right there's a particular question coming up in second part in the part b i'll uh, detail that some more at that state there are some particular states active state passive state and rest state at rest condition right so at rest condition is for k0 and ka is for active and kp is for uh, passive right typically passive is much higher passive is the largest one right active is will be the smallest and k0 will be somewhat in the intermediate right so as we know kp is the largest one uh, a and b would be the only possible solutions all three things uh, c d e options are wrong right so out of uh, k a and k sorry out of uh, a and b uh, there's another thing here which came as k water right right i think k water is equal to 1 right i do i am not 100% confident in that right i couldn't find a proper reference for that right i i just it's my uh, own idea since water there cannot be any friction right so there's a the equation for k not or kp or k everything relies on the angle of friction right so if theta is that phi or theta whatever the symbol you are writing there mostly we are using phi right if phi is zero uh, then the value for k1 k water becomes one right so k not is always less than one right unless the friction angle is zero k not is always less than one but there is no any soil which has zero angle of friction you can't find such soils right uh, so not would, would be the minimum k water would be in some intermediate value and kp would be the maximum right so i think the option a would be the suitable one for this 10th mcq right uh, the 11th one right so 11th one is an um, test uh, based on a test the standard penetration test which would be perform which you all will be performing uh, in the sites uh, so many times to do some soil testing whoever work in site they know uh, others this is for your information right so the sptn value is the number of blows counted during the penetration of 150 meter no 
So typically we penetrate up to 450 millimeters, 45 centimeters, and we take the number of blows for the last 30 centimeters. So A statement is wrong. So if A is wrong, right, only the answer is only B, right? So B is obviously option B is correct. That is B, C, D, all three statements are also correct. Right, SPT sampler yields disturbed soil sample. Yes, when you are, we, we, we use standard energy and we drop a weight on the drill pit, so it obviously disturbs the soil, right? And for medium sand, uh, there's a particular values, right? For medium sand, it's, uh, it's around 10 to 30, and there are some other values. You can find it in any references, right? Uh, the record SPT value at significantly greater depth is greater than its actual value. Yeah, it obviously it's greater because when you are drilling, right, in some sort of way, you are compacting the soil also. So you are drilling, same time you are compacting the soil below it, right? So you are providing some forces. The soil gets somewhat, for a certain degree, it gets compacted. So it becomes harder and harder to go deeper down. So when it's harder and harder to go deeper down, you have to provide more number of blows. So the value we are recording would be a greater value than its actual value, right? That is the thing happening here for the D statement, right? So B, C, D all are true. So option B, right? Uh, the next thing, right? Uh, which of the following statements are true, right? These are based on uh, compacting, mostly on uh, road projects, right? So here, uh, smooth wheel uh, rollers are used to compact crushed rock and cross grain soils. Yes, right. Uh, static uh, sheep food rollers are used to compact fine grain soils. Yeah, they used to uh, compact that. Sheep food rollers are used to compact very fine soils like clay soils, like those things. Right. Uh, vibrating plate tampers are used to used when compacting small areas or coarse grain soil. Yeah, for small areas, you would have seen this in. Road, road projects, mostly traveling when you're traveling by buses, right? Uh, they use these vibrating plate tampers, right? And uh, rubber tire rollers are used when compacting asphalt. So this is definitely, obviously, everyone would know rubber tire rollers are used when compacting asphalt, right? So here, I think the option is E, all four statements are true, right? So this is the MCQ part of last year, right? So this is the very paper which I did. Right. Uh, so the thing which I want you all to do is like a small uh, suggestion is uh, you get 36 marks. Out of these 36 marks, you can score above 30, right? at least 30, 30 or above 30. Right? That's my opinion. Right? You can definitely do that within half an hour. Right? Within half an hour, you can definitely do that. Uh, rely on your tactics and your calculation. Use your calculator, right? So think properly and do the questions, right? While doing statement questions, uh, you all know this. You all we are doing this from the A levels, O levels, A levels. Remove the unwanted options and go for the answers. Read the question properly and handle it, right? So any issues when it comes to this MCQ part? which I have to say again in this 12 part. So speak up now, huh? this is your chance, right? So you want to get this chance of discussing uh, in YouTube, right? I'll definitely upload this to YouTube, but you want to get this chance in YouTube, right? So excuse me, can I uh, yeah. ask any uh, questions? Yeah, yeah, of course. Sir, uh, in uh, I don't know which year, uh, mm -hmm. in one past paper, there is okay. a st statement. Okay. Uh, that was uh, um, uh, if the natural moisture on the soil reduces, what happened for the unrained cohesion of the soil? So, on, uh, if the natural moisture content uh, reduces, right? Moisture 
soil is ready to use. Question of the soil. Uh, sorry, I couldn't clear uh, hear you properly. It's very much uh, started. Sir, there there was a question. Okay. Uh, if the natural moisture content of the soil is reduced, okay. In a clay soil, what happened uh, for the unrain cohesion of the soil? Uh, it will increase. What is the reason, sir? I, I search so, in the net, sir. It, uh, it there uh, it will be increased. What is the reason for that? So this is the thing happening, right? So I'll I'll just explain this, right, in a bit different manner, right? So, uh, so I am now uh, revealing my viva question to you all, right? So when I faced my oral viva, so this year most of the students faced the viva through, uh, as I know, you all faced the viva through online, right? So you all did some questions, uh, some papers, right? If I'm right. So, so previous years we had to give the viva a face-to-face -face viva, oral viva, right? Yes. Uh, so this was my question. So which uh, sir asked from me when I did my viva. This was my final question. I I had sir, around uh, four, three questions from sir. Sir asked three questions. This was my third question, right? So here, let's think now. You are doing a UC test, right? So uh, now everyone are performing a UC test. Uh, we are taking a sample, a saturated sample. A saturated sample is must for UC test, right? So why we need a saturated saturated sample? Because it is an undrained test, right? So UC test means it is an undrained test. You are not allowing any sort of drainage. So that is the meaning. In that, right, it's an unconfined compression test. So no any lateral stress, you're not providing any stress in the lateral direction. At the same time, you're performing it quickly so that you're not allowing any time to drainage, right? So that is UC test. Okay, are you clear with this statement? So I'll, I'll answer your question, but are you clear with what I said now? Speak up, guys. So you can chat also. Right? right. Okay. So I'm just going to deviate from UC test for a minute, right? So you you have done consolidation test. So for ten days, a chaotic experience, a very useful test and a, a test where you allowed drainage, right? So in one UC test, you did not allow drainage and did it quickly. And consolidation, you did allow drainage. And do you, if a sample is allowed to drain, right? If a sample is allowed to drain, there is drainage occurring, right? What happens to the strength of the soil? Sorry, sir. You are allowing drainage. You are doing consolidation, right? You are doing consolidation. Either it can be in laboratory, either it can be in your site, wherever it is, okay? You are allowing drainage. So if you are allowing drainage, then only consolidation can occur. Without drainage, there is no consolidation, okay, in clay soils. So what happens to the strength of the soil when you are allowing drainage? It will increase. Sir. Yeah, it will because definitely increase. Particle, particle contact point. Yeah, will... yeah. yeah, you are right. So... What happens when natural moisture content decreases? If natural moisture content is decreasing, that means there is drainage occurring. Some, some, in some manner, the natural moisture content is decreasing means the drainage is occurring. The water is flowing away from the soil. So what happens to the strength? It will increase. Yeah, that's all. 
what is the relationship between the strength and uh, untrained cohesion strength and the untrained cohesion the cohesion is Sir, it yeah. uh, depends on the not only depend on the untrained cohesion but also in the uh, friction also yeah in friction also it might depend but in clay soils cohesion plays the major role rather than friction right yes so here we major uh, speaking part is cohesion not uh, the friction okay Okay, so I'll uh, reveal my question here, which sir asked me, right? So we we are using a saturated sample, right? In UC yes. test. So what happens if you use a unsaturated sample? So when you are performing a UC test. if you use a unsaturated sample what would be the issue uh volume change will happen sir because uh, uh, when we yeah, uh, yeah. Apply, apply the um, uh, force mm. then air void will be uh, released or removed then volume uh, uh, uh. Uh, then we can use the equation uh so, okay there's a better answer for that one actually it's related to drainage uh related to drainage you see this yeah, yeah. Uh, so the sample is unsaturated right yes so if it is unsaturated there is definitely voids in the sample no oh, that means uh, air voids yeah voids mean air void right so i'm saying about air void right there will be definitely air pockets some space remaining so now you are starting the compression you are going to compress the sample in the uc uh, test bench right yes. so once you compress it right what the water will flow inside the sample itself the drainage will occur within the sample with inside the sample itself okay Oops. can you understand there will be some air pockets remaining there will be some amount of water when you start to compress there will be a drainage occurring within the sample right there is no any way to go out the water won't come out right from the clay it won't come out there will be definitely movement within the water sorry within the sample so if there is drainage the sample will consolidate so if the sample consolidates your cohesion will increase throughout the compression and while you start to compress it it will become harder and harder to compress and the sample might not fail during the uc test if the sample is not saturated why why sir the cohesion increased so that's what i explain <laughs> if there is drainage so yes. definitely the strength of the it, it is consolidating if it is consolidating the strength of the uh, soil increases so it is clay soil so the, the, the dominant strength is from its cohesion so obviously the cohesion increases so uh whatever sir um, uh, the water molecules are didn't go out no yeah <coughs> then sir uh, with, if uh, those are within the soil mm. uh, how we can say uh, cohesion will increased so the drainage occurs within the sample here man it occurs within the sample not going out right so mm. there are different types of drainage one is the one dimensional drainage which you all are studying now right yes. there is other drainages in radial direction drainage is very chaotic behavior right it won't occur in particular one direction right we have to restrict it right so in uh, consolidation test we are restricting it to flow in one direction using the ring right so here you see mm-hmm. test there is nothing like that right from a clay sample water won't come out that easily right you know clay 
has a very strong adsorption right so it will definitely hold <coughs> hold the uh, water together so it won't come out <coughs> <coughs> sorry so the water would be within the sample itself it would flow from one place to another place that means it will fill the other voids right when it is filling the other voids so obviously drainage is occurring right so if drainage is occurring then it's consolidating it's consolidating means its strength parameters increase if strength parameters increase definitely cohesion is increasing so you we won't get a straight line uh failure envelope it will be completely different so it is a drainage test your triaxial test either you can say it as cd test or cu test is according to the particular uh, condition we are providing so it goes to completely different uh, category so we can't say it as a uc test at that time so that is the issue if the sample is not saturated so another thing is uh, we can uh, use the equation also uh, the change in the area of the uh, uh there is a different equation for that uh, if you want to use that one we can measure the volume change also uh, volume uh, uh, yeah yeah here you can measure the volume strain but there are some other methods uh, to measure volume strain uh, when it comes to triaxial method but here we don't uh, measure volume strain in uc test All right okay so did you get it Oh, thank you, thank you very much. Okay. Right. Uh, any other questions, or if there are nothing, so we'll move. So re regarding MCQ, right? I'll come to the part two part later regarding MCQ. If there are no any questions, we'll move to the next part. Mm -hmm. In seventh question, we got uh, answer E. In question number. <laughs> Which question? Seventh question. Yeah, yeah. But the I think the answer answer is D zero point zero zero one seven. Zero point zero one seven. The interpolation K twenty eight is zero point eight four one six. Eight four one six. We got. Yeah, I we got zero point nine eight nine four nine eight. Yeah. I... How we? right i got a value as 1.004 minus uh, 0.801 by 10 right so this for 10 units right by 8 and 1.004 minus answer so yeah my calculation is wrong yeah so thank you for that uh, so the viscosity is uh, 0.842 not uh, 0.984 right it's 0.842 uh, so if it is 0.842 it's 1.004 times 0 0.02 so viscosity is uh, zero sorry the answer is uh, option d sorry for the seventh question yeah he's right yeah. so what whoever the person was thank you Now, I think can you explain the question number four again, please? Question number. <laughs> Which question? Question number four. Question Vertical number four. Effective stress. Yeah, that's fairly simple, right? So that's not a big deal. Wait, give me a second. So here, if you see, right. uh you are you are not changing the sand or clay right you are only adjusting the water table right so if you are you know the total stress sigma is the weight of unit weight of soil times its height we are not changing the unit weight we are not changing the height of the soil so right. total stress do not change right so so total stress uh, if the soil uh, uh, stratum is uh, differ it may change no 
Yeah, tot, tot, here total stress do not change, right? We are not doing anything to the soil stratum. We are not. We are only changing the water table. We are moving the water table from one position to another position, right? Uh, within, so within the water table, no. Sorry, I, I couldn't understand what. No, sir. Uh, in the in the zero meter to uh, three meter. Yes. It uh, in uh, that area. There, mm. there is only gamma bulk. Okay. Gamma bulk only. Uh, okay. From uh, three meter to uh, five meter. From three meter to five meter. Meter. Uh, gamma saturated comes. Okay. Then so uh, those are different. So if you do the calculation, it won't differ, right? Then, when we have the equation for the total stress, uh, zero meter to three meter, it, it will come gamma. I will see. We'll see. It won't. Uh, it won't affect. Right? I'll just do the calculation. Right now, you are saying like, like this, no? Give me a second. Yeah. So here it's zero meter. <clears throat> here it's uh, five meter. Right here, water table is here. Right at three meters. So here gamma is seventeen. Right here gamma is different. Right. I'll just say gamma dash. Here it's twenty. Right. So let's consider a point uh, at the bottom. Right. Uh, what is the depth there? The depth is up to nine meter, right? So the depth here is up to nine meter. Let's consider this uh, bottom point, right? So what is the total stress there? Sigma is equal to seventeen times three plus. Uh, here it's seven. Uh, no, I am considering the water table is at three meter. Uh, right. right. At three meter, right? Water table is at three meter now. So C is seventeen minus nine point eight one into three, right? So plus twenty times four, right? So when the water table is at five meter, what would be the sigma? It's seventeen times five, right? Plus twenty times four. Am I right? Yeah, seventeen times five. Uh, into twenty times four, right? If we see the difference, delta, uh, when you when we subtract, uh, here it's seventeen times two minus. I am subtracting from five meter and three meter. From five meter, I am subtracting three meter. Minus seventeen minus nine point eight one into three, and these two cancels out. Here, uh, it's uh, seventeen times two minus seventeen times three plus nine point eight one into three, right? So here nine point eight one into three minus seventeen. Nine point eight one into three minus seventeen. So it's twelve point four three. There is no such answer as twelve point four three. So this gives twelve point four three, but there is no such answer. Right? Let's see. Let's see if it gives. Let's see. Hello, Hima. Okay. Hello. Oh yes. Uh, Bottom table uh, three are equal to twenty mm -hmm. into four or twenty into six are. Uh, twenty into four. Then I do five meter. Total right. nine. Uh, oh. seventeen to three plus twenty into six. Then I do. Is it clay? Inge alla matto then I do. Is it clay? Do matto then I sand. But I am a hard answer. But three la and three la water table where I get la sand in the gamma saturation power given. Oh, in the two meter ka matto gamma saturation power given. Oh, sorry, I am a two. Value, value, value. Right, right. 
Right, right. I made a mistake. Here, here, you have, no one noticed. Right? So here, uh, can Hello. you please move to your mic? Uh, can you please move to your mic? I found the mistake, right? So if you see here, this depth is only two meter, right? So gamma dash, that is saturated sand uh, unit weight, right? This one only for two meter, not for three meter. I have written three meter here. So it is not three meter, it is two meter, right? So into... Excuse me. Yeah. We can't see we can't what see you are doing. Screen, not your doing calculation. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Can you teach AI? Ah, sorry, sorry. I thought I am sharing already. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Sorry, sorry. Ah, is it okay now? Okay, now we are seeing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now let's see. Now this is the figure, right? Uh, now if we see him, I I did the calculation and I I did a small error there All right so here at the bottom point i am calculating the total stress at this bottom point a right so first i am considering the water table s is at three meter so sigma is equal to 17 times three i am considering this portion 17 times three here in the second portion the sand is saturated which is two meter depth so 17 minus 9.81 into 2 plus for the why did, part. Why did you, why did you minus, sorry, excuse me. Why did you minus the 9.81 from the 17? In the total stress, uh, we not need to minus the gamma W. Uh, give me a second. This is... Uh, effective stress. Yeah, yeah, that's the effective stress. Uh, give me a second. Something happened in my screen. Give me a second. In the effective stress. So. Uh, uh, whoever the person speaking, I can't actually hear you properly Hello, because sir? of the, the stuttering. We, 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 so we need to uh, gamma saturated value of the sand. But it is not there. Give me a second, give me a second. Something happened in my laptop. I, I couldn't work properly. Give me a second. I'll come to you. Right here. So actually I have calculated the gamma dash, right? So not the gamma. I have actually calculated gamma dash at the both the situations, right? So when it comes to total stress at sigma at A, when water table is at three meter, when it, uh, the sigma would be 17 times five plus 20 times four, right? So total stress, only we consider the soil. So this is total stress. We know we no need to bother about the location of the um, water table, right? So when it comes to effective stress, but, yeah. But sir, we need to the gamma saturated value, you know, sand, uh, uh, gamma saturated value of the sand is not given in here. So that's, so you can find the gamma saturated also, no man. So just you have to subtract uh, the 9.81. So you, right? If the gamma saturated is not given, so uh, whoever this person speaking, I can't hear you. Bulk. Hello, sir. Whoever this per person who was speaking, I couldn't hear you. 
so in here we are using uh, total stress yeah um uh, uh if the cal- in the calculation of the total stress we need uh, gamma saturated value of the sand also okay but in here we don't know the gamma saturated value of the sand they didn't give in here yes yes uh, if the true. water table is in the 3 meter mm. how we can uh, calculate the value between the 3 meter to 5 meter are ah, you that particular portion so here so typically if we have the unit weight right Uh, bulk unit weight right you have to subtract uh, the water right uh, so this, sorry if we have the saturated unit weight right to calculate mm-hmm. the submerged we have an idea right so if we know gamma sat right we know an idea to find gamma sub right so you can find that in right? here sir we not here, the, yeah sir, here the issue is we don't we don't need, we don't know the saturated value here that is the gamma dash we don't know what is that gamma dash right so that is the issue you are speaking right if i am right yes right so when you are calculating the total stress right so we we are considering only about the water right so whatever the variation you are doing right so what table is varied from one place to another that is from 3 meter to 5 meter right so whatever yes, the then. change yeah right let me finish right whatever the change you are doing it only affects the change only due to that water right so other things do not change right they counteract the other things properly right so if you change the water by 2 meter right so the effect would be only that value right so if you the unit weight of water is 9.81 if you multiply that by 2 you'll get the change is only by 2 meters so it's 19.62 uh, right so that would be the change right other than that we are not changing any other parameters here right so nothing will change so that is so the that concept behind this bulk density will increase no sorry uh, sorry sir bulk down uh, density is not uh, total stress will increase no if total if stress is about or just if you change the uh, water table from the 5 meter to 3 meter okay then total stress of the uh, uh, that uh, point is uh, that point will increase no it's so right it right yes. it might increase right it oh. might increase or it might decrease we don't know what happens to the total stress unless you know this value right so you are right in that but the see the question what they are asking from you yes the question is about the effective stress only right effective uh, we can we can say sir effective uh, stress will uh, reduce right if obviously the effective stress will uh, there will be some sort of change right it, it, you don't need to worry about whether it is increasing or decreasing right so that is not the case here right they are asking what happens when the water table is changing from one particular location to another particular location right yes they are only changing that particular parameter so other sand is not changed clay is not changed nothing is changed right oh. so nothing will happen to other parameters that means i am saying about the sand and soil parameters soil parameters do not change right you are only lowering the water table from a particular depth of 3 meter to 5 meter so what is the change occurring in that that is obviously its unit weight into 2 so that is 9.81 into 2 this is the change occurring due to that water table change other than yes, that yes. nothing will happen so sigma dash is equal to sigma minus u right mm. so whatever the change occurred to you will occur to sigma dash also 
Yes. So simple as that. Don't get this complicated. You are making this um, much more complicated to yourselves. Hello. Yes. ट <laughs> 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 මේ අවුරුද්දෙන් නම් ඔයාලට එහෙම ප්‍රශ්නයක් එන එක ෂුවර් නැහැ. බයි ලබන අවුරුද්දෙන් එහෙම තියෙනවා. ලබන අවුරුද්දෙන් එහෙම සමහර ගණන් තියෙනවා උදාහරණයට කියන්න ඕනේ නම් sheet file කියලා එහෙම ගණන් එනවා. ඒ ගණන් එද්දි submerged දෙනවා සමහර වෙලාවට. submerged එහෙම දෙද්දි මේක තමයි කෙලින්ම submerged විදියට අපි ගන්නේ. ආහ. මේක කෙලින්ම submerged. එතකොට කෙලින්ම ඔයාට effective stress හම්බෙනවා. හරිද? දැනට confuse කරගන්න එපා. දැනට फॉलोकरा <laughs> जस्ट <laughs> डिसाइन कर सेम बेसिक प्रिंसिपल सेम दी गेमा सैचुरेटेड थिंग्स एफेक्टिव स्ट्रेस एंड एम सी क्यू एम क्यू के गाव अलू सिलबस कटना डिसाइन कर बलम उटर <laughs> 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 वाटर को उराई हुई रखा थे, उराई हुई लंड सोना ना ना गेस पन है ना तो राइट, ऐना किधर केंगे ही में रिफरेंस कंडे पुड़ी जी गया ना, अब फाइव वंदे जीरो ऑन डेट तीन लार ना, के वंदे उगल को ऑन्डर नू वरुँ, सही है? के वाटर ना देना? के वाटर ना, उनका इधे मधुली कोविशंट वंदे, अदाव जी लैटरल प्र प्रेशर कोविशंट वाटर के पाक रहा है वाटर इन्टर प्रेशर कोविशंट है ना ना ये नेक्स्ट ईयर केली से योग कुले ही मुंगल के बारे में वाटर इन्टर प्रेशर कोविशंट स्वारा टाइम लो नांगा उन्नत इन्टर ऐड पोमर सरे या इप्पा उंगल के इप्पोड़ की देवल है नेक्स्ट ईयर रुके आई मीन जियोटेक्निकल से योग कुले बारे में स angle of friction zero angle of friction zero unda ninga k a saman paadu payan padithina inna k not kaana saman paadu inna inna k p and inna endha saman paadu ku potalum k water vandu ondinu da varum endha state la irundalum sari active state passive state rest state endha state nalum sari neradi inna varum k w ondu ondu appa kattayam k not vida k w epdi irukum perusa irukum oh 
வரும் <laughs> 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 Then we will go to the next part, right? Uh, right. Uh, Sir, part I will help, help. Yeah. Yes. Sir, I will tell you that 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 நீ <laughs> Okay, let's go friends here. Let's go and forward. Okay, right. Uh, we'll move to the part B then. Right? So in part B, the first question, uh, shear strength of soil is expressed in uh, terms of Moe Coulomb failure criterion. State the equation that expresses Moe Coulomb failure criterion. Define the terms, right? So definitely you all, by this time, you all know the equation. So equation is tau equal sigma tan phi right plus c right so if it is if you are defining the terms right so sigma is your normal stress phi is your angular friction c is your apparent cohesion and tau is your shear stress right so the field and laboratory strength tests are used to determine the shear strength parameters uh, these parameters are used to establish the more coulomb failure criterion for a given soil subject Uh, to a given test condition express the more cool of failure criterion as interpreted by the unconfined uh, for uc test and cd test right so here so quickly i'll write this one so this is your shear stress right so this is sigma is your normal stress right so this one phi is your angle of friction right and c is your apparent cohesion okay these are the terms so they are asking to draw the more cool on failure envelope for uc test and cd test right so for uc test you all uh, obviously know that one because you have performed this in your lab it's a horizontal line like this this is your undrained cohesion and here undrained angle of friction is zero right so you know the reason because undrained means it is fully saturated so the particles are covered by a water film around them so the friction would be zero uh, right here for the cd test so consolidated and drained test right so for here right uh, what type of soil so they are not mentioned for a given soil but we you don't know what is the soil right so here there are two type of failure envelope you can draw right so one is through the origin right another one is with an intercept so this one as a intercept here this is through origin so this is one type type 1 this is type 2 so i'll explain what is this this is for your for an additional knowledge for you all right this is for oc clay right this is for nc clay so anyone who know what is nc and oc clay anyone uh, who can quickly uh, say what is that quick give a quick explanation Thank you. 
Hello. Yes. If the or in the pre consolation pressure vida sorry pre consolation pressure vida uh ipate pressure one the uh stress one the kure wear the chance on the chance on the over consolidation uh could wear the chance on a normal consolidation of the year uh three pure more solar pre consolidation pressure vida okay uh ipate the pressure one the uh sorry stress one the could wear the marinda அது வந்து நார்மல் கன்சல்டேஷன் குறைவா இருக்கு மாதிரி இருந்தா ஓவர் கன்சல்டேஷன் நீங்க கொடுத்த ரெண்டு एक्सप्लेனேஷனுமே ஓவர் கன்சல்டேட்டட் டெட்லேக்கு தான் பொருந்தும் ஐ சோ நவ நவ த पर्सन who spoke uh, now she is saying that a soil whose uh, whose current stress is greater than pre consolidation pressure is Uh, normal consolidation normally consolidated clay and whose current stress is less than uh, pre consolidation pressure is uh, over consolidated clay so that is the explanation which she gave right now right but that is not the case here right so uh, uh, explanations suits only for oc clay right anyone else the last try anyone want to try i know i know buddy right okay i'll explain so this is very important right so you have to uh, understand nc and o sleep properly right you all have completed your consolidation test so you, by the time now you should know what is nc clay and you should know what is o c clay right so uh, nc clay means from the very first day the soil formed maybe 1000 and 1000 and 1000 and years back to till this very moment to the time right now when while we are doing the uh doing this uh discussion if it is experiencing the maximum stress in its history right the maximum stress in its history right if this maximum stress in its history is experienced at this very moment at this very second if it is experiencing its maximum stress it is nc clay so by time so passing I'll explain, right? yeah I, yeah i'll explain right so by time passing so tomorrow there might be another layer forming about right so it at that time the stress would increasing so that would be its new pre consolidation pressure so every day its pre consolidation pressure might increasing might be increasing or at this current state it should be experiencing the largest stress it has experienced in its history so that is the pre consolidation stress right so so not pre consolidation stress and that is its uh, the nc clay situation that is normally consolidated situation it is experiencing the maximum stress at this very present moment then me vela vedi thamai eyage history ekema eya experience karanna upparima stress eka then me vela ve experience karano mekata kalin eya experience karala ne e wage soil thama nc clay right so ipa adin or soil eduthi ngala arna and soil inda history le இப்ப இந்த நேரத்துல எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் பண்ற ஸ்ட்ரெஸ் தான் அதிகமும் ஸ்ட்ரெஸ் அப்படி ஒரு கிளே தான் நார்மலி கான்சோலிடேட்டட் கிளே ஓகே சோ ஐ ஹவ் செட் இன் ஆல் த்ரீ லாங்குவேजेस எனி டவுட்ஸ் பத்திர பேச சொல்றீங்களா தமிழ்ல அதாவது அதுண்ட வரலாறுலயே அது இந்த குறிப்பிட்ட நேரத்துல எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் பண்ற ஸ்ட்ரெஸ் தான் அது இந்த ஹிஸ்டரியிலேயே அது எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் பண்ணின மேக்ஸிமம் ஸ்ட்ரெஸ்ஸா இருந்தால் அது என் சீக்லே இட் சுட் பி த மேக்ஸிமம் ஸ்ட்ரெஸ் விச் இஸ் விச் இட் இஸ் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்சிங் ரைட் நவு தட் டைப் ஆஃப் சாயில் இஸ் என் சீக்லே 
So actually that is not a different type of clay, okay? OC clay means it is a different clay. NC clay means it is not a different clay. Not, that is not like uh, Montmorillonite and Kaolinite, not two different type of clays. These two are different state. These are two states, right? Like liquid gas, something like that. One is at NC state and another one is OC state. Just two situations, not type of clays, right? So don't get confused in that, right? So here OC clay means the stress which is it which the soil is experiencing now is less than the maximum stress which it has experienced earlier. Yeah, history ke dang experience karan stress katawada uparima stress ka kya kalingma experience karla tip both yata pi kiyanwa O C clay kiala. Right? O C clay in the sonna ipa the experience pandra stress a vida. Other than the history, the period stress on experience pan irundal, other OC clay. Okay, so NC clay means experiencing the maximum stress right now. OC clay means it has already experienced the maximum stress in its history. So that is the difference between NC clay and OC clay. Okay, what it That's why sir, the stress is not Oh. If you stress on the console, you can see the stress on the condition. You can see the normal console. Ah, you can see the overconsolidated. Overconsolidated. Oh, overconsolidated. If you have the stress, you the and then the pre consultation and the model experience one pressure on the tan double kit is in the sonava. The other one, normally, normally consultation. Right. You, uh, sorry, idea, sorry. You got the idea. Hmm. Okay. Right. Right. I'll finish this stress path uh, thing. I'll finish this uh, uh, thing and I'll just explain this again using your sigma versus uh, E, void ratio plot, right? I'll just quickly finish this and I'll just move to there, right? So still here, the difference is if you see the angle is not much an uh, issue, right? Here in this angle, here the angle is one has a one angle phi one, then another one has angle, another angle phi two, right? This is due to their different degree of uh, consolidation, right? So uh, don't worry about this angle. Here the major uh, debate is in this zero, right? So if it is NC clay, it is considered that cohesion is zero, right? Don't so, ask why. NC clay is a cohesion on the zero on the ground. Don't ask me why, <laughs> right? <laughs> because it is a debatable topic, topic, right? Still, there is research going on to find out a proper reason for why normally consolidated clays are taken the cohesion is taken as zero. It's a debatable topic, right? Still, there is no any absolute proof as per my knowledge, right? So according uh, according to my search, I couldn't find a proper reason behind that, right? So we are considering C is as zero, but I don't know why, right? So open statement, uh, even some of my professors has uh, said the same answer when I asked them. Right, so I don't want to name the professors. Right, so uh, this is a debatable topic. There is still research going on. You can search on internet if you want. Uh, I did search on internet also, but I couldn't find a proper reason behind why uh, C is taken as zero. But still, in our theory books, it is taken as zero. Right, so don't ask me as why. So I'm sorry. <laughs> right. For OC clays, they are taking a value for C. That's why there is an intercept for OC clays and there is no intercept for NC clays, right? That is the thing here, right? I'll quickly uh, explain uh, with your E versus log P graph and we'll move to the next part, right? So when you take the E versus log P plot, right? That is your void ratio versus log P plot right log sigma right which you plotted in your uh, labs right so it is in this manner right
right if you if you have performed your laboratory test properly these two lines this graph can be separated into three portions right so here to here one portion and this second portion right and this third portion right so this is your uh recompression curve so this is your recompression curve this Not portion is, right this is your virgin curve so and this is your rebound curve the bottom part so mm-hmm. if you would have done the practical correctly without any errors these two gradients of recompression curve that is this is cr and this right. one is also cr this should come properly right uh, this is cc right this is your cc right i have seen only one groups graph right i have seen some lab reports from last year to that previous years and your year papers also i i did only find only one groups uh, graph which i had uh, with this equal values both the cr was same it was nearly parallel right i couldn't find any other graphs right if i had time i'll show it uh, at the end right here and so this is your pre consolidation point right here using some drawing you know how to find the pre consolidation pressure right so before this pre consolidation part right here this is your sigma p so so what is pre consolidation stress the maximum stress the soil has experienced in its history right so mm-hmm. here in this left side we are applying stress which is less than sigma p to the right side we are applying the stress which is greater than sigma p so that is happening right so until this point right until here the clay is in oc state am i right so this is the pre consolidation pressure now right until the soil starts from point 1 to point 2 the pre consolidation pressure is sigma p in its stress history so until that we are applying the stress uh, the stress which is less than this sigma p right so it is in oc state now after from point 2 to point 3 you are applying a stress which is greater than sigma p so now the soil is at nc state nc state yes right once you reach sigma 3 so point 3 now you started unloading after point 3 you are unloading right now okay. what is what is the maximum stress now so the stress which is here this stress right i am writing in blue ink the blue ink sigma right that is the new pre consolidation pressure so from point 3 to point 4 again the soil is at oc state yes. so this is the new sigma p now you have changed the sigma p you have applied uh, some additional stress than the old sigma p and you have brought the pre consolidation pressure to this blue color point right blue sigma p so again after unloading the st- st- soil is at oc condition so while performing your consolidation state test you have started from oc state you have come to nc state and again you have moved to oc state right this sir, is a repeated sir, cycle sir. yeah sir if if we uh, pass the sigma p2 i means uh, the that uh, are corner corner point uh corner point means three, i have marked three 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 okay three. okay okay again it will come as a nc soil yeah it will be another nc soil then it will it will and, become and, a nc state oh and also come uh, and a new pre consolidation pressure yes Uh, comes also the same line of the virgin line yeah it will follow the same line so actually yes. this is happening right the, uh, around some millions of years back a particular soil might have formed some air right at this point let's say there is a soil forming uh, again another layer will uh, form above so it will start to consolidate right it will follow form a line like this right it will be consolidating at some uh, say, let's say now you are excavating that soil and taking to laboratory 
once you are excavating the soil the soil will start to dilate what is dilating dilating means it will start to expand right soil is an plastic material so if it is plastic material it can't go back to its initial state so there will be some sort of deformation so this is your rebound curve now so this is your virgin curve right this is your virgin curve and this is your rebound curve now you have bought this to your laboratory and you are now performing a consolidation test right when performing the consolidation test it will move along this line and it will follow again the same gradient of the same gradient of the virgin curve and once you start unloading again it will rebound so this is again rebound so what is this red color here this red color one is the recompression you are again compressing so this is your recompression right what is the this reason, side reason, sir, excuse me what is the reason for it uh, it comes again and again parallel to the the all of the rebound curves are parallel so what actually is it is not parallel right to be precise to be correct it is not parallel right this curves are not 100% straight line it moves in this manner mm. it goes in this manner right to make your calculations easy we take an mm. average value between these things and we draw this as a straight line mm. okay actually it is not linear right soil is not then linear that much friendly material right so but we uh, with some assumptions we can make this friendly right to make the calculations easier we are taking this average right let's say if we if we couldn't take this straight line part the calculation is much harder right so what, what, is the, what, is, curve. what is the difference between the rebound curve and recompression curve yeah both are same that's why they have they both should be parallel to each other right both has the same characteristics but the recompression curve uh, is much shorter than the rebound curve because the recompression curve uh, reaches the pre consolidation pressure much quicker right and we pass the once we pass the reco uh, pre consolidation pressure we enter into the virgin curve part so after virgin curve part the rebound curve starts so there is a bit difference in the length of that only other than that both are nearly same things right that's why the gradient and all are same we are taking the cr values are all are same <coughs> okay uh, i think uh, everyone uh, now know what is oc and nc right uh, okay right so i'll move to the test part so a cu test right they are speaking about cu test right there are a few tests for you all that is uh, c u c test c u test u u test and c yeah u u and c d so u u u c these both are somewhat similar c u c d right mm. these are the tests right in triaxial tests right one of the complicated and uh, most accurate test you can find right uh <laughs> here they have said the cell pressure so typically we denote cell pressure by sigma 3 so sigma 3 is 50 sorry 250 right principal stress at failure right so the principal stress at failure means right the stress you are applying right the stress you are applying we denote by sigma 1 minus sigma 3 sigma 1 minus sigma yeah deviatoric stress so that is 600 right and the excess pore water pressure at failure pore water pressure at failure is 250 so you have to be sorry not 250 it's 50 sorry so you have to be careful while uh, writing the symbols right so first you have to understand uh, what is sigma 1 what is sigma 3 and what is uh, the u right u you all obviously know the pore pressure inside the soil sample right so when you take a triaxial cell right it's like a chamber right and within this chamber we have the sample so this is your soil sample and entire soil sample is covered by water right everywhere this is water 
So the sigma 3, so if you take the soil sample out, the sigma 3 pressure would be acting around the sample everywhere. So sigma 3 is everywhere, right? This is all around the sample, right? So when you take the final stress diagram of the sample, right? This is that one. That is the sigma 1 is your vertical stress. Sigma 3 is your horizontal stress, right? This is your final diagram, the total stress acting on the sample, right? So sigma so 1 is the top. Sir? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, applied stress and other one, deviated stress. You know, applied stress and yes, yes, right. So, but now, if a sigma one happened in area of bottom is another end and sold rather sigma one than sample act after total stress, right? Sample act after total stress than sigma one, okay. Ning apply under the sigma one illa, right? So, the with the load we are applying is right so you, you would be applying some load to the sample right the load we are applying is sigma axial right this is the axial and the one angle could look around the sigma one than a male and the male or load on it no 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 that is not sigma one right so most of the students get confused here right so when you combine these two diagrams right these two diagrams combine to form this one, right? That is sigma one and sigma, sorry, sigma axial, sigma axial and sigma three, both combine to form sigma one. So sigma axial is sigma one minus sigma three, which is your deviatoric stress, right? So these are standard notations right sigma 1 sigma 3 these are standard notations defined dot notations sigma 1 is the total vertical stress acting on the sample so this is the total vertical stress right acting on the sample right so sigma 3 is the total horizontal stress so sigma 1 is not the stress you are applying that is not the axial load so be careful, right? Axial so load. Is, sigma one again and pair would That is total vertical stress. <clears throat> right? Uh -huh. So that is why uh -huh. in the question they have stated that is the principal stress uh, difference, right? These are your total vertical stresses, right? So total vertical stresses, sigma one and sigma three are your principal stresses. Right. So what is the principal stress difference? Principal stress difference is sigma 1 minus sigma 3. That is mm -hmm. your axial load which you are applying to the sample. So that is given to us as 600. Right? Not the sigma 1. They don't give most probably sigma 1. We won't be getting sigma 1 directly. Right? So read the question carefully. Right? I hope you would have understood what is sigma axial and what is sigma 1 and what is sigma 3. Right? These are predefined terms. Right? Sigma 1 is your principal, major principal stress and this is your minor principal stress, sigma 3. This is your major part and this is your minor part. Right? So the deviatoric stress is the difference between the major principal stress and minor principal stress which is your axial load. Right? Don't get confused. Right? Okay, so I'll move on to the question now. Right, uh, sorry. Oh, I can't erase the code. Okay. Right. So using these values, you can find out what is sigma 1, right? What is sigma 1? Sigma 1 is 850, 800. right? Simply, yeah. Simply, we can say that as 850. So, sigma 1, right? 
sigma 1 it's 850 sigma 3 it's already we know it's 250 so using these two values you can draw the more circle right so if we take the axis right we can draw more circles this is sigma tau so this side it's 850 so this is 250 right so you can find the center so center would be if you add these two it is 1100 so the center would be uh, 550 right right i'll just find the center uh, they are asking us to find phi dash and phi so phi dash and phi so the uh, sorry phi dash and phi uh phi dash is for effective stress and phi for total stress so we are now doing for total stress and you have to now the issue has come right we have to correctly draw the failure envelope failure envelope should be correct right otherwise the answer would be wrong you have to read the question properly it is undisturbed sample loose to medium sand so undisturbed right undisturbed sand whatever the loose or medium it is sand sand means cohesion is zero right so directly you can find cohesion is zero and you have to find draw the more coulomb failure envelope such that it is perpendicular to the radius this should be perpendicular so this angle is your phi right so if it is phi sin phi Right. What is the radius? Radius is 300, right? 850 minus 250 is 600. So the radius is 300 divided by uh, 550. So taking the inverse, you can find the angle phi. Simple as that, right? So how to find sigma 1 dash? Sigma 1 dash, sigma 1 minus u. Sigma 1 minus u means this is 800. What is sigma 3 dash? 250 minus 50. So sigma 3 minus u, that is 200. Right? So again, you have to draw the more circle. Right? You can draw in the same plot. Right? So here I am drawing in different plot, but in your paper, uh, you can draw in the same plot. Right? So here it is 200. Here it is 800. Again, the radius is uh, uh 300 so the center would be 500 so the more coulomb failure envelope would be somewhat like this here it would be perpendicular this angle is phi dash so sine phi dash is equal to 300 by 500 so here you can find the phi dash value so very simple right so here Okay. Oh, so very simple, right? Uh -oh. the, yeah, it's very easy, fairly easy question. So the concept behind here is you should understand the importance of each test. Here, CU test is very unique, right? In CU test, you can both find effective stress parameters and total stress parameters. You can't do this in CD test. In CD test, you can only find uh, your uh, total stress parameters because it is a drainage test. We are allowing drainage. So the pore water pressure will dissipate to the time and you will get a zero answer only finally for pore water pressure. It will dissipate to the to time. So we can't measure that one, right? CU test is a bit unique. You can find both the parameters. So, uh, but the question is fairly simple. I, I don't think they will complicate this question much more, right? Uh, bit complicated questions will be coming in geotechnical, but these are fairly simple. You should know to draw the more Coulomb failure envelope correctly and find the concepts, right? If the, if, it is for clay soil or any other soils with the value of C. Here, C is zero. If it is with C, they will give different data with different cell pressure, right? That means here, sigma 3 is 250. 
they will give another set of data with sigma 3 let's say 350 and the respective they will give the respective uh, deviatory stress and the respective pore water pressure additional one set of data will be given to you and you have to draw the both the more circle in the same plot right and you have to draw the tangent line for both the circles right mm -hmm. so i'll draw a small figure here uh, i assume you can see right something like this uh, one circle like this another circle will be bigger right and you have to draw a tangent for both the circle with the c right and if you extend this right uh, you would you will be needing this additional value x right you will be you would need this additional value x and you you can find the center one c1 you can find the center also this i'll just write it as c2 right you know the radius of each circle i'll take this as r2 and i'll take this as r1 and the friction angle let's say the friction angle is phi so you can write sin phi right sin phi can be written as right r1 divided by x plus c1 again sin phi is equal to r2 divided by x plus c2 right so using these two relationships this uh, these two fractions you can find x after finding x you can find phi right simple as that right after finding phi uh, you know x and you know phi you can use tan phi right tan phi is equal to c by x right so you can find the cohesion c so very simple so enna enna and idu kanikiram unda ningal x vand so here you know r1 right you know radius r1 you know radius r2 right ah nadu pundida oh you know center uh, points okay. right so then you can find x right simply solving so fairly very simple question i think there was some questions in your previous years right okay so another the... yes cu cu test la vand excess pore pressure vand negative sign thana pogudhu cu test la appa adinda negative sign தான் போகுது ரெண்டு தான் அந்த ஒரு சேர் வந்து ஒரு வீடியோ போட்டு வரத்தானே அதுல இருந்து அது அப்ப வந்து அதுல எஃபெக்டிவ் ட்ரெஸ் வந்து கிராஃப் வந்து பலப்பக்கம் போற மாதிரி அப்ப இதை அட் பண்றது இல்லையா அது சிடி சிடில தானே வந்து நெகட்டிவ் இது வரும் ட்ரெயின் ஒளியில ட்ரெயின் கிவ் மீ எ செகண்ட் ஐ ஜஸ்ட் குயிக்லி ரிஃபைட் ட்ரெயினா நெவர் no no uh, we are correct oh but idhu vandu cu test la vandu randavathu condition vandu u dhaan irukku oh we are we, we are doing it in the correct manner okay so there might be a, a situation where negative stress can negative pore water ca can develop right it can develop right if negative pressures are developing in the uh, in the soil sample they will mention that it is a, it has a negative pressure right there might be some situations where negative pressure uh, might develop if negative pressures are developing they will mention it uh, to you properly right they will give it in a minus value or they will give, uh, use different terms here it is excess pore water pressure so definitely it's in positive right so we are nothing uh, new here right so don't get confused right so in case any negative pressures are developed he is right the person who argued it's right the circle will move to right right but here it's not the case right i got the values as for for 51 for phi total pressure so total value it's 33.056 uh, degrees and here it's 36.87 degrees so these are the values 
which I got, right? You can do the calculation and find it, right? So the next part, right? Uh, explain how would you check the safety of a two-dimensional stress element against possible shear failure, right? So here, I think uh, I'm a bit uh, not 100% sure about this question. I think we have to explain this using the more Coulomb failure envelope and more circle, right? So once the more circle touches the more Coulomb failure envelope, uh, the sample fails and you can find a failure plane also, right? So that is the thing which I had to say there. And uh, the next question, the question number two, right? Uh, it's a fairly simple question, right? So first question in the... First, first question means? What is the first question they asked? Uh, in uh, which part you asking the first? This is the first question we uh, just now uh, spoke about. First question, which is the triaxial test one. Uh, so yeah, I'll just show you the question quickly. I thought you all are having the paper, right? So that's why I didn't uh, share the paper throughout the thing because I can't share both the paper and. Paper is not showing. Yeah. So this was the first question which we discussed about. It's about triaxial test. The second question is uh, regarding your effective stress and total stress, right? So the A part is much uh, easier for you all, right? Right. A part is much easier because it's a direct theory question. It's they are asking about the uh, effective yes, principal stress theory and uh, defining the terms. You can find that directly from your textbook, right? Uh, so I'll move on to the calculation part, right? Sketch the variation of total vertical stress versus depth indicate the principal values of a b c and d right if you find the values at a b c and d you can directly draw the graph much easily right uh, please use graph sheet so you can draw for the scale so the graph would be accurate and much nicer right so i'll move to the whiteboard and uh, do that one right so at A, right? So A is at a zero level, right? I think you all are having the paper. So I'm just going to calculate the values. So total stress at A, it's directly zero because A is at the top. So it's zero, right? So at B, sigma B, right? If you see, it's 16 times one, right? So 16 times one, so 16 kilopascal, right? So at C, it's uh, so total stress, right? Only total stress. So 16 times one plus 19 times one. So it's 35 kilopascal. And at D, uh, it's again 16 times one, 19 times one plus 15 times three. So it's totally 80 kilopascal. So you have to just draw this variation, right? So this is our starting point and here it is zero and A at B it is uh, 16 and C it is uh, let's say 35 here and at D it is uh, 80. So you have to just plot this, right? Simply like this, you have to just plot this in a graph sheet so it would be much more accurate, right? You have to just measure Sir, the lines. Sorry, yes. And the you know, and the and the you know, and gradient name or the path to go on the Mandanga, the Sari, and the Yeah, you can and just the, draw a scale, right? You just uh, let's mm -hmm. say one kilo pascal is equal to uh, sorry, ten kilo pascal equal to uh, one centimeter. If you take a scale, ah. something like this, final exam, a serangle, a serangle, a graph sheet, a madangle. You can request, you can ask for a graph sheet. 
so you can ask from the exam uh, whoever the person uh, distributing the papers there you can request for them uh, if they give a graph sheet draw in a graph sheet or else when you are drawing your answer sheet just draw it for some scale like this so these uh, a b c d lines will be uh, ni- m- much nicer it will be easy for you all right right that's all not a big task right you can measure using your ruler and do this one right next is uh, your pore water pressure so u a is zero u b is zero and u c it's 9.81 into 1 so 9.81 kilo pascal and again u d right it's 9.81 into 4 right so it is uh, 39.24 kilo pascal so similarly you have to take here so for a is also zero for b is also zero for c it's 9.81 right for c and for d it's 39.24 right for d point so you have to just draw this in this manner right so that's all right so for sigma dash you have to just subtract sigma a and u a and sigma b and u b respectively and you have to find sigma a dash sigma b dash sigma c dash and sigma d dash right finding that after finding that you have to draw the pore water pressure graph in a similar manner right so sigma dash is equal to sigma minus u you have to find sigma a dash sigma b dash sigma c dash sigma d dash and you have to draw the graph so it's a simple part i leave it to you leave it to you right uh, so we have completed a b c d d all uh, four parts right e part compute the vertical stress sigma v and sigma v dash and sigma h and sigma h dash acting on the element located at point e you may assume uh, at uh, that the state uh, is at rest right so i'll do that one right right so sigma v they are asking us to find the vertical stress sigma v right sigma v is right uh, 1 times 16 plus 1 times 19 plus 2 times uh, 15 so that is 65 kilo pascal okay and sigma h is k not times sigma v this is the equation right yes. so this is k not times sigma v so k not is 0.5 it is given to us times 65 so this is 32.5 kilo pascal right so what is sigma dash v sigma dash v is 65 minus the pore water pressure pore water pressure is 3 times 9.81 so we have to find the value so, here naangala the k note ku baavikira value vand direct ah vand idhu effective stress ku illa baavikinaanga total stress ku baavikira illa illa yeah we can you can use for both the stresses rendu ku use pannalam illa yeah. rendu ku vand 0.5 fer adu enna nu sonna appa naangala the sigma effective stress dan vand and k note and condition ah use pannalam okay மற்ற டோட்டல் ஸ்ட்ரெஸ்ஸுக்கு வந்த வரையில வந்து இப்ப சிக்மா எட் டேஸ் கணிச்சு போட்டு அதோட ஜூவ கூட்டி தான் சிக்மா எட் காணல அதுக்கு வந்து இப்ப ரெண்டு கம் வந்து கே நோட் ஒரே ஒரே வேல்யூ ஆயிரா அது நாங்க எஃபெக்டிவ் ஸ்ட்ரெஸ் தான் வந்து அந்த கே நோட் அந்த கண்டிஷன் வந்து யூஸ் பண்ணல லெட் மீ சீ போய் <laughs> 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 
yeah yeah he is right uh, i just remember that so it's a not here right uh, k not k and kp all these three parameters right these are only for effective stresses right so just keep that in mind uh, i just forgot that so this is a, this is a very very important point when it comes to designing right this was stressed to us many times but you see normal human mind we, i just forgot it right so sigma dash h right sigma dash h is uh, 35.57 in 2.5 so you will get 17.875 some of value like that right kilopascal so sigma h would be um 17.785 plus your pore water pressure right so what is the pore water pressure at that point it is 3 times 9.81 so this gives 17.785 plus 9.81 into 3 so that is 47.22 47.22 kilopascal right so the next part is um, drawing mo circle sketch the mo circle of the stress with the respect to total stress and effective stress representing the soil element e stating the principal values so obviously you know this is the major principal stress for total major this one is minor again similarly this is major and this one is minor right so if you draw, if you see the stress element so this is sigma v and this is sigma h and similarly this is sigma v dash and this is sigma h dash right so you can draw two more circle for this condition and this condition and that's it right and mark the principal values right they ask you to state the principal values these are the principal values right so that question is done so second question is done right fairly simple question right uh the third question and uh, fourth question i am not going to uh, discuss because it's a uh, completely uh, old syllabus questions and uh, uh, it's way much higher for the uh, new syllabus people so i thought of uh, uh, neglecting that questions and uh, i wanted to discuss a particular question in the part 6 uh, right i mean question 6 right i'll get so adile enna kaatirukanga k a ya kaatirukano edile k sambandha padudho and adile all syllabus endha question endha question solringa all syllabus question enna konnu sonniya ah question 3 um question 4 um ah oh adu enna kaatirukan question 3 vandu roll a pass right ungalku illa oh and uh, question 4 vandu method of slice right method of slice um illa ungalku right idu rendu me completely too much right so na adha potu kula pa verumala right uh next one right so i'll i wanted to discuss question 5 this is also not uh, related to new syllabus but let let me see i'll first i, I have another one which is common for both the syllabus this one question 6b part this particular consolidation graph right so this one is uh, the idealized graph right so the idealized in situ compression curve generated from the laboratory compression curve constructed during the one dimensional test explain how would you obtain the xy coordinate uh, of the points a b c right so they asking us to find the xy coordinates of point a b c right so here this cc and cr right cc in situ you can uh, uh, um, find this directly right mm-hmm. but uh, you can uh, uh, find cr and cc from your lab graph right so now you know e not right e not value is the value where you start start at the practical and sigma not uh, sigma dash v not is the initial stress right which you are providing so using these two uh, values right you can find the uh, a right you can find a 
right after finding a you can draw a parallel line to cr right that is the cr you can take the gradient cr and draw a line through a which is parallel to the cr gradient same gradients and already from the lab practical you we know sigma p so we can draw a horizontal line and we can find uh this uh values uh, b point b right so a is done and b is done right when it comes to point c from all the knowledge of consolidation graphs and many many consolidation graphs it is found that always sigma p lies on this line of 0.42 e not this one is a typical line right it like always lies there right and when you extend the virgin curve right when you extend this virgin curve gradient cc line it also meet at this point c right so every consolidation graphs meet at this point if you draw drew the practical correctly every point should meet there according to your data right so now you know point c so after finding point c you can connect a and b and c and you can find cc right so that is the thing which i wanted to mention here right uh that's it for this uh a part uh, b point a b and c right uh anything else uh you need me to discuss in this paper so can you explain the last question repeat again the ab the consolidation curve yeah 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 right can you please so give me a minute right so you know the initial value e not right the practical when we are starting starting the practical you know the e not value right yeah so so from the e not value uh you can draw a straight line and find the uh, y coordinate of a right that is e not right so sigma dash v not is the overburden stress which you are providing at the time right and you have to draw a straight line and you have to uh, find a first right after finding a through a you have to draw a line with the gradient of cr and you, you know the pre consolidation pressure already and if you draw a vertical line right you can find b right the point c right the point c uh, is the point where this gradient zero... of ab is equal to yeah cr gradient of ab is equal to cr, cr right cr okay uh then uh, 0.42 e not so that is a uh, empirical value right it has been determined from practice from drawing number of curves that is decided that every uh, every virgin curve meets at this 0.42 e not line right so this 0.42 e not and the virgin curve from your lab right meets at point c once you know point c you can connect bc and you can find the in situ right cc what is in situ what is the term in situ means actual it is it, it is an actual condition of the uh, uh, compressive uh, coefficient of uh, compression of the uh, soil yeah undisturbed in, undisturbed yeah, in, in situ means it it's in a natural state it's in oh, the natural, natural state so that that's uh, it very simple and, and undisturbed stage we can yeah, say yeah 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 in the laboratory say, curve yes, in the laboratory curve it may uh, disturb so yeah, that is disturb yeah yeah uh, yeah uh, lower than uh, in situ yeah that's why performing a triaxial test is much much harder because we need a proper sample preparing a sample itself uh, is a very big task that's why we are not performing in our uh, university laboratories right uh so should i do the retaining wall question so actually i have done a similar uh, question uh, 
in uh, geotechnical videos i'll leave a link in the description right later when i upload in youtube uh, there are some other videos in my channel where i have done some uh, retaining wall questions also so this is a uh, cantilever retaining wall there's another type of retaining wall which is gravity retaining wall so i i suspect right i don't know exactly i suspect sometimes you might get some sort of this kind of question right uh, stating for new syllabus students they don't know what is active pressure passive pressure but giving the equation let's say uh, there is a term called active pressure with the equation of uh, this equation and the pressure can be determined using these equations some sort of in that manner explaining the theory a bit and after that asking to do some question there might be some questions like that i i don't know right i am just uh, if i prepare the paper i might give so that is that is the thing i wanted to say you might get uh, papers uh, questions like this i have already discussed some questions like this in uh, uh, my other geotechnical videos uh, you can uh, watch there also or else if you want me to do i can uh, do this also it will take about uh, 15 20 minutes about but sir excuse me sir yes could you do the last question because uh, this one is uh, only for uh, all uh, syllabus students yeah if you did the uh, last question uh last question is completely based on theory right so in last sir, question the it, a part it is, is it, no 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 it, uh, it is no it is uh, not in a, uh, that uh, question only we, uh, in the um, uh, soil mechanics book uh so in the, the a part uh, in the sixth question you mean the question number 6 right but uh, in question number 6 uh, am i right uh, shit hello yeah which you do you mean the question number 6 yes sir this one on uh, only with uh... uh... Uh, hydraulic question i related to hydraulic question yeah that that is available in your book i think it's in the, the permeability part right uh, rock fracture part uh, i don't think so they one it will come to new syllabus right uh, the second thing which i did now cone penetration test is for all syllabus students right and uh, the d part is your level 4 structure general shear failure local shear failure punching shear failure these are your uh, level 4 footing design right but here i don't think uh, new syllabus students will get uh, this part right uh, the another thing which i wanted to just a small suggestion for you all is to Uh, be wise and bit cunning while uh, deciding the questions right uh, go through the entire paper after finishing the mcq i think half an hour is more than enough to do the mcqs after that go through the part 2 paper properly and select proper questions so in last year paper this is my paper which i did i did the first one second one uh and uh, i did third one roll a pass question and after that uh, i did the retaining wall right so retaining wall is much easier right so anyone who want me to do the retaining wall part hello yes uh, and the question is in during sir the retaining wall ah ama okay 
Anyone else who need the retaining wall one? Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, while doing these uh, retaining wall que wall questions, uh, you will be needing an additional equation, right? So that is the only thing, right? Other than that, most of the things are common sense, right? Um, so the first part is considering the backfill is in active state. So they have sta said the backfill is in active state. Compute the magnitude of the force due to earth pressure acting along the imaginary line per meter length of the retaining wall, right? So I'll just quickly go to the whiteboard and draw the figure, right? Give me a second. So if you see the figure, right, there is an imaginary line here, right? I'll draw the retaining ball part later, right? Here there is a surcharge pressure of 50 kilopascal, right? Uh, this is 5.5 .5 meter high, and uh, the gamma of the soil is 17.5, and phi dash is 38, right? So Ka is, there is an equation, this is one minus sine phi over, 1 plus sine 5, right? So you can just substitute 38 degrees here and you can find the value that is 1 minus sine 38 degree or 1 plus sine 38 degree, right? So it gives a value of 0 0.238, right? So sigma dash H, so the effective pressure is given by K times sigma V dash, right? This is the equation, right? Unless there is cohesion. If there is cohesion, there is another part minus 2C dash root of K, right? Here there is no cohesion, so we no need to consider about this part, right? So at the starting point, at zero, right? At zero, right? What is the vertical pressure? Vertical pressure is directly 50. So what is the horizontal pressure at that point? It is 0 0.238 times 50. So that would be 11.9 kilopascal, right? At 5.5 meters, at 5.5 meters, the vertical pressure, I'm not considering the surcharge now, right? There is a reason for that. I'll say that why, right? Without the surcharge load, what is the, uh, can you all please mute yourselves? Uh, what is the surcharge, uh, without the surcharge, due to the weight of the soil, what would be the vertical pressure there? It is 17.5 times 5.5, right? So that would be, uh, you'll get a value here. Uh, the vertical horizontal stress would be 17.5 into 5.5 times 0 0.238. So that is 22.91. Kilopascal. So the reason I did this in this manner is you have to draw a stress distribution, right? Stress distribution means, right, this is your retaining wall, 5.5 meter high. Due to this 50 kilopascal, right, we are experiencing a horizontal stress of 11.5 throughout this imaginary line. So this, this is the figure for that, right? 11.5. 9 kilopascal, right? When you are considering the weight of the soil, at starting, at zero meter, there is no any weight. So the horizontal stress is zero. Once you, once we are going down, slowly the weight increases. So slowly the sigma V increases. Slowly sigma V increases means sigma H also increases. And finally, it is getting a value of 22.5. So it is getting a value of 22.91. So at, at starting it is zero, at finally it is 22.9. So only when you consider the weight of the soil. So it, the graph would be a linear graph like this one. So what would be the total? At initial it is 11.9. Finally it is 11.9 plus 22.91, right? So you have to draw this stress distribution, right? This is very important, right? So we did this one earlier. In the sec second question part, 
yeah we had total pressure pore water pressure and finally we uh, did the effective stress the same similar thing we are drawing the stress distribution right that's all right so the first part is done right at 0 meter it is 11.19 and finally it is 22.91 plus 11.9 right so it is increasing right so the next part they are asking us to calculate the weight of the soil and weight of the concrete elements acting on the base bc per meter of length of the retaining wall structure right so so if you see the figure right i'll just quickly uh, talk through that right so time is running out right if you see this figure i'll just quickly uh, guide you all uh, what is the weight of the soil weight of the soil you have to first consider the area of the soil area of the soil is 5.1 meter right 5.1 meter because i am my uh, deducting this 0.4 meter the base of the retaining wall that 0.4 meter is concrete so i am removing that so height of the soil is 5.1 meter and width of the soil is 1.8 meter so that weight of soil is acting on the base right so you have to consider that area and they have said per meter so the into the paper or outside the paper we are considering only 1 meter so the volume is 5.1 into 1.8 into 1 so you have to find the volume and what is the unit weight of the soil it's 17.5 so into 17.5 will give the weight of the uh soil right so simple as that so what is the weight of the stem stem means this bc uh, sorry uh, base weight of the base is this bc part that concrete of that bc part right so that is 0.4 into 3 that is the area times 1 it gives you the volume times the unit weight of concrete that is 24 so you will get the weight of the base what is weight of the stem weight of the stem is 0.3 sir ga save irum anada uh yeah i'll i'll do that right so the problem is i can't write with the pdf i can't write about the pdf that's why i'm just sharing it and uh, talking through that i'll do that calculation also right uh so when you see the weight of the stem it is 1.8 times uh, sorry uh 0.3 times the height that is 5.1 into weight of the concrete right so that is the thing all right so i'll just do the calculations quickly all right so i'm erasing these parts all right right so here i'll just draw a rough figure right so this is that imaginary line ab right so we have to consider this soil part right so we know this height of soil would be 5.1 meter up to here it is 5.1 meter so weight of soil right weight of soil right that is 5.1 times right uh, the base height is uh, so the base length is 1.8 meter right so this is 1.8 meter here the thickness is 0.4 meter here the thickness is 0.3 meter this height is uh, 5.1 i have already written that this is 1.8 meter so these are the data right so here this is 5.1 into 5 1.8 into 17.5 so the total weight is 160.65 right kilo newton right so weight of base that is the concrete base so that is the total width is uh, 3 meter so here it is 1.2 total is 3 meter 3 times the thickness is 0.4 into weight of concrete is 24 
so that is 36.72 kilo newton and weight of stem right so just these are just volume calculations so that is 0.3 into 5.1 into 24 so that is 28.8 kilo newton so that's it right fairly simple right uh, show on the sketch uh, the magnitudes and direction of the line of action of all the forces acting on one meter length of the retaining wall at its static equilibrium right they want to show the uh, show these forces right i'll just name this one as f1 f2 f3 right f1 would be at the center of this rectangle right here this is f1 right i am just taking this point a and marking the distance also there is a reason for this i'll say that later right so this distance would be uh, from the center this part would be 0.9 okay since this is 1.8 the total distance is 1.8 for the soil so the exact middle is 0.9 total length is 3 meter so this length would be 2.1 meter okay and for the base if you take it would be at the center it is f2 so this distance would be 1.5 and 1.5 so since it is center and for the stem it would be at the center of the stem and this is f3 right from a we have to find the distance right so i am just write, writing it as lever arm lever arm from a for a it is 2.1 meter from here it is 1.5 meter for the stem if you see for the stem it is 1.8 uh, and uh, it is 0.15 so 3 minus 1.8 and yeah it is 3 minus 1.8 minus 0 0.15 so the answer would be 1.05 so there is a reason for this i'll say that why all right uh, it is in the next part so they are asking us to find the factor of safety against overturning so overturning means this retaining wall is going to topple it's going to uh, uh, fall right that is this active pressure here these active pressures are right for this rectangular portion it will be acting at the center right here so this is the point a a is somewhere here right from a this lever arm is 2.75 that is 5.5 by 2 right for this triangle it will be acting at somewhere here so this is 5.5 by 3 so so this is that is one third from the bottom right so this force is uh, let's say this is uh, f4 and this is f5 this f4 and f5 are pushing pushing the retaining wall right that's why it is in active state right that means this retaining wall might fall this side so it should topple around a so we are going to take moment about a that's why i took the lever arm that is the perpendicular distance for the forces from a right so we have to find two moments that is overturning moment overturning moment and the resisting moment so overturning moment is which is causing the retaining wall to fall who is trying to uh, collapse this f4 and f5 so before uh, finding f4 and uh, f so before doing the taking the moment you have to find what is f4 and f5 so this is 11 point uh, 9 kilopascal right it is in stress so you have to change the stress to force right so to change the stress to force right you have to multiply it by the area so that is uh, 11.9 times 5.5 right so because into the paper so into the paper means uh, so it's uh, simply uh, per meter means into one so into one right times the lever arm it is 5.5 by 2 plus right for the triangle half times the area that's why i calculated this only this part this is 22.91 half times base into height 5.5 this gives the area of the triangle times the lever arm ratio this is 5.5 by 3 so i'll take this as m naught you can do the solving right overturning moment so resisting moment 
so resisting moment right is given by f1 times 2.1 plus f2 times 1.5 plus f3 times 1.05 so this is mr our resisting moment right so the factor of safety f4s is given by m not right uh, or uh, our resisting moment sorry mr divided by m not this is your factor of safety right fairly simple calculation right so the next factor of uh, safety against sliding right so the factor of safety against sliding means you have to find the sliding force right so if it is going to slide the reason for sliding is this f4 and f5 so this is f4 and this is f5 so f4 plus f5 is the sliding force the resisting force is your friction resisting force is the friction right they have said our delta the frictional angle is given to us in the question as 30 right so what is the total weight on the base we know f equal mu r right so frictional force f is equal to total reaction times the mu r mu is equal to tan lambda so, so what is the total weight on the base that is f1 plus f2 plus f3 so tan 30 times f1 plus f2 plus f3 right so this is the sliding force fs this is the resisting force fr so factor of safety against sliding fos against sliding is given by sliding force right the resisting force fr should be divided by the sliding force right so these two are the factor of safety calculation right okay uh, the next part the stress compute the stress distribution beneath the footing um, base bc show its principal values it's actually it's a tricky part right so i'll to try to do that quickly right so here if we take the base right so this is this was our base bc it was three meter in length right the actual middle is 1.5 right so from here we did the moment and all so earlier i did marked as a right we have to find where our resultant force is acting right so there is an overturning moment m naught there is an resisting moment mr right so assume we are, uh, one moment is trying to overturn it another moment is trying to res resist it what will be the result uh, resi um, uh, resultant moment acting that is m not minus mr or mr minus m not according to the value right typically the resisting moment is higher right so the resultant moment m would be acting as mr minus m not okay so the resultant force acting on the base f times x bar should be same as the resultant moment right right the resultant force acting on the base is the total force on the base that is mr minus m naught is equal to f1 plus f2 plus f3 this is the total weight acting on the base times x bar right using these values you know mr you know m naught you know all these values so you can find x bar so right so x bar you can find x bar right so after finding x bar there is another value right which is called eccentricity eccentricity is x bar minus b by 2 so b is your base so in this in this our case x bar minus 3 by 2 so this is eccentricity eccentricity should be always within two third that is b by 3 at eccentricity e within this value right that should be within that value right 
sorry not uh, eccentricity x bar sorry right base of x bar should be within this value and e should be less than b by 6 right so there are proofs for this one so i am not going to prove proof is available in next year right so don't bother about the proof just remember these things for the time being if you want to know the proof just refer a geotechnical book or i think i have explained it in my other videos in geotechnical videos right and there is another equation for this so you have to remember one more equation that is sigma equal to r by b o into 1 plus or minus 6 e by b so r is your total reaction that is this f o r so sigma is equal to sigma maximum is equal to f1 plus f2 plus f3 by b that is 3 in our case so 1 plus 6 e by b so what would be sigma minimum sigma minimum would be equal to f1 plus f2 plus f3 by 3 by b 1 minus 6 e by b so once there is eccentricity in a footing the stress distribution will be somewhat like this so it won't be a even stress distribution at one side it would be maximum and other side it should it would be minimum if there is no eccentricity here there is eccentricity if there is no eccentricity the stress distribution is even right so this is a very good footing right this first type without eccentricity is very good for us even if there is eccentricity it's not an issue but it should be in uh, a decent value it should be within this value or else our structure might collapse or either if it is a footing or if it is a retain wall there will be some issues so this is the thing happening behind uh, these calculations right so we are finding what is the stress distribution this is a very important calculation don't bother if you don't understand now if you understand it in the following year that is way uh, enough because at that time as a geotechnical engineer you have to design footings right you will do some questions much easier don't worry right uh, just discuss it i'll be back in two minutes and wait we'll discuss the doubts also yeah i'm back right 
if you have any doubts you can ask now i'll uh, give you another 10 minutes 9 minutes hello yes so uh, most of the question in this paper is relevant to the new old old syllabus uh particularly in the second part uh, some of the questions are entirely based on old syllabus yeah i need to know sir what will be what questions will be in in uh, new syllabus paper what type uh, of like let's talk like this like what kind of yeah. area will be covered in new yeah. new new syllabus paper new syllabus i i just no i don't know what, what Uh, the pay, what is the what will be the paper according to sir's standard but if i am preparing uh, i would definitely include some things from your practicals right like standard proctor test or your constant head permeometer or your falling head permeometer uh, yeah. your cons- uh, your uc test questions or a triaxial test questions right uh, there are different options right right without that uh 10 sessions which were removed from your syllabus right yes. there are so many things within your practical itself right yes. so if you are much confident with your practical uh i think uh, you all uh, can uh, do a uh, fairly uh, take a fairly good marks from your practical knowledge right Mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i think uh, you should be thorough with your practicals and with the theory behind that practicals so uh, okay. it won't be much hard right mm-hmm. the soil is not uh, there is a meat right uh, in uh, typically when you come to our university mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to civil and when you are going to second year right one city soil mechanics soil mechanic uh, soil nang malli lesi na uh veda karaganda amaru tamai everyone would have heard this word right yes, i did uh even i did uh, I, i said to my juniors also but the thing is if you are not prepared it's much difficult if you are prepared it's an interesting subject and very easy so be thorough with your uh, what what to say the practicals so i got i was highly disappointed when uh, when i heard that your vivas are uh, conducted with um, online in online so yeah. uh, if it was through uh, oral viva you would have uh, known the pressure of yeah. the that viva then you would have understood how to uh, get ready for the paper because sir has a typical way of asking questions and he if he gets the answer he, he will quickly uh, realize that this person has prepared right yes, yes. so uh, while you, you if that 5 or 10 minutes uh, cons- conversation with sir is uh, it's a huge uh, helpful thing to get uh, ourselves prepared to do that uh, do the final paper that that thing uh, particularly this year students they missed so they yes, don't right. know how sir will ask a question individually they know how they will ask how sir will ask in a group viva so as uh, your vivas group vivas were taken uh, by sir but they don't know how sir will handle a question uh, when you are facing him individually one to one Uh, that experience most of the people this year they missed it uh, other than that i think you should be much well prepared with your what to say your labs especially lab thing right? okay okay uh, and uh, be how to say that be you should be spontaneous you should be quick with your mcqs and uh, and you should be cunning right you should be somewhat cunning to omit some uh, neglect some options and you have to be tricky and do some things don't worry if you uh, if you for, if you forgot one or two questions but you can do that later also uh, mm-hmm. keep that in one side and uh, move to the other things right mm-hmm. okay sir okay so uh, 
meanwhile you are asking doubts i want to show one more thing can you see this graph yes sir so this is a particular uh, graph from a lab practical uh, graph so you can see this this test was performed by students right not uh, the sir or any other uh, demonstrators this was performed by a group of students right who had no knowledge about consolidation right i mean no any prior knowledge they all were first year first time students who are doing soil mechanics right so you can see if the practical is done properly we will get the proper graph right or else no right so yeah. if anyone who had got this this type of graph uh, they have done the practicals properly so you can congratulate yourselves so i don't know who who has done so that's why i said so right any other questions there are three more minutes if you want uh, more discussions please i'll upload this to youtube you can find there and uh, if you are request i'll do or else i won't do so how can we find uh, 2016 uh, 17 papers i do ingila uh enough request irukuma irundha na seiven illa nu sonna seiyradhula chance illai yes matter vandu mcqs answers ungala pep la poduvingila mcq na ipo idla senja pa da answers na ella solli thana senja செஞ்சுன் <laughs> 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 so how can we yeah. find your geotechnical videos from i see my channel uh, uh, should i should i know uh, name uh, yeah it's uh, dr engineer 43 right i'll just leave a link in the chat uh, you can uh, uh, get it from the chat give me a few minutes i mean while others can answer uh, ask the questions okay uh and uh, you can contact me through my fp page also. sorry sir i couldn't so uh, i have a fb page also so you can uh find me there also so you can either leave a message in fb so later i uh, reply that if i have time so i can do the question or whatever if you have doubt i can Uh, reply that reply in that so if you are, if there are number of requests uh, to do this do another session i'll do or else i i want do another session right there are some other request for some other subjects so if you are requesting uh, definitely i'll do another paper either uh, the last year before paper i mean 2016 17 something like that if there are enough requests right because uh, uh, the participation was other i i didn't expect uh, this amount i was expecting some other amount so it was bit lower so i have leave the link for both the so did you receive the link for both uh, face facebook and uh, hello I, yes yes Hello, sir. Can you uh, can you do a last five years MCQ only? Uh, Another that can session. Be done. Yeah, I can do last year, last five years, right? So five I won't. Be, so I won't be doing this year again. So, uh, can you fix a date for that? Uh, so uh, let's see so i have to publish this one and i have a request for hydraulics level 3 hydraulics yeah so uh, so i had a request for that so i'll be doing that in the next week around wednesday or thursday so i haven't decided the date uh, after that uh, 
around next week okay. maybe so i have okay. to wind up this uh, discussion things before september 15th so because i am having my exams surveying yeah. geology i have uh, four exams right so i have yeah, to prepare for you also board. have survey and geology can you uh, pass uh, do you, your answers uh this like it with, uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, regarding past papers so i can uh, if if uh, there are enough requests i'll do a session for surveying but huh? geology there is no point of your point in doing discussion right it's uh, entirely theory based uh, yeah. subject so uh, there's no point other than that uh, i already did some for geotechnics and uh, the another subject which i have is mathematics level 5 so i uh, we'll see so i thought of doing other subjects bit earlier and my oh. subjects Sir, i also requested uh, the surveying paper surveying i uh, will see uh, so mm-hmm. i'll publish uh, some google forms by the time so you'll receive that through your groups or whatsapp so i'll publish in my page also so mm-hmm. if you follow the, the pages uh, you will find the google forms you fill that uh if you have, if, if i have number of certain number of requests i'll do okay? okay okay anything else just two more minutes it's way past the time it's around 10:30 now it's going to be 10:30 others can leave right if anybody they can they are free to leave Sir, and subscribe the channel and support me out. yeah hello yes 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 i am here and the cc irukutane adu vande vande primary consultation and and the idukilla region ukilla use pandrathu aha aha illa illa primary consultation secondary consultation vande completely entirely different concept அதுக்கும் சிசிக்கையும் நீங்க ஒன்னா சேர்க்கலுமா சேர்க்கறது சரியான சிக்கலே அப்படி டிஸ்கஸ் பண்றது சரியான கஷ்டம் பிரைமரி கன்சோலிடேஷன் என்றது என்னது சி பேஜ் ஆல அதாவது ட்ரைனேஜ் நடந்து செட்டில்மென்ட் நடக்குறது அதுதானே பிரைமரி கன்சோலிடேஷன் செகண்டரி கன்சோலிடேஷன் என்றது பார்ட்டிகல் ரீஅரேஞ்ச்மென்ட் நடக்குறதுனால நடக்குறது தான் செகண்டரி கன்சோலிடேஷன் சோ இதுக்கும் சிசியையும் நீங்க சம்பந்தப்படுத்துறது வந்து நோ சான்ஸ் கம்ப்ளீட்லி டிஃபரண்ட் டிஃபரண்ட் அந்த நீங்க உங்களோட அந்த क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर 2 அந்த வீடியோல வந்த ஒரு கேள்வி செஞ்சீங்க தானே அதுல வந்து செட்டில்மென்ட் காண்றதுக்கு முதல்ல வந்து பிரைமர் கன்சல்டேஷன்ல செட்டில்மென்ட் கண்டிட்டு அப்புறம் செகண்டரி இந்த கண்டு தான் செய்வீங்க அதுல வந்து பிரைமரி செட்டில்மெண்ட் காண்றதுக்கு சிசி யூஸ் பண்ணி செய்வீங்க பிறகு வந்து சி அல்பா அந்த ஒரு கம்பன தந்திருந்தது அதை யூஸ் பண்ணி அது அதுல ஒரு கரெக்ஷன் செய்வீங்க அதுக்கு இன்னும் வித்தியாசம் அது ரெண்டுக்கும் இந்த சி அல்பான்றது வேற <laughs> 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 ரெண்டுக்கும் வந்து நீங்க என்ன செய்யலாது ஒரே பேராமீட்டரை என்ன செய்யலாது யூஸ் பண்ணிடலாது யூஸ் பண்ணிடலாது அதுக்கான கரெக்ஷன் தான் அது அது ஒரு அது உங்களோட பாஸ் பேப்பர் क्वेश्चन ஆ ஓகே ரைட் ஆ டு अदर्स ஐ ஹேவ் டன் சம் वीडियोस இன் கன்சோலிடேஷன் ஆல்சோ இஃப் யூ see my channel you can find that uh, in my channel so whoever right now you can convey the message to your uh friends also there are some questions waiting anything else so quickly anyone so how you do hello yeah So how to uh, calculate the open state with the surcharge load? So if there is a surcharge load, right? Please explain. Oh, so, 
uh, do you have any question? If you have any question, please share the screen so I can uh, say that. Uh, Someone is playing any games? Anyone playing some sort of action game? I hear some noise. PUBG. The person who asked about that surcharge question, if you have any uh, question, so please I can just moment. I cannot find that. Uh, I, I remember that there was a question in your textbook, right? If yes. I am re uh, if I remember correctly, there's a question in your textbook. Let's let me see. I can't remember the page exactly. 85. 85. 85, yeah. 85? Yes, there's an embankment. Highway, uh, how the topic ah, so you, are, you are using the new syllabus, right? Yes, yes. Uh, what is the session uh, Session name? Session uh, Computing Settlement. So session 12. So it's in your book, it's Session 12. But mine it's different. Okay, give me a minute. I want to know when the surcharge load is applied, how to calculate the overburden stress. Yeah. Overburden yeah. stress. Yeah. With, without forward pressure or with forward pressure. It is a, oh, it's, it's according to your location, right? So like according to the location of the forward pressure, right? Sorry, location of the water table, right? Here. Is it TV stress? Sorry? Is it effective stress? The overburden stress is? Uh, yeah, I see the fig figure that uh, gamma saturated is 18.5 and a clay soil of 19.2. That one, right? Uh, so, yes, sir, but uh, it is calculated based on the pressure bar. Sorry? The yes, size is uh, calculated based on the pressure bar, that question. Using pressure ball. So the typically the overburden stress is the stress which is applied due to your surcharge, right? Now be, before surcharge and after surcharge, right? So yeah. that overburden means additional stress you are providing, right? So before providing the surcharge and uh, even after providing the surcharge that three meter clay that stress is always there that doesn't change right so when you're adding that uh, or uh, surcharge above that 1.5 meter fill that large fill you are increasing the stress by 18.5 times 1.5 that is the overburden yeah. the additional stress you are applying to the soil that considered yeah. soil element that is the overburden is, uh, part Yes, uh, it, it is it is over. Yeah, that is the overburden part. I think this is your TMA question, if I am right. Yeah, also is question stress, from your TMA. Is stress increment, sir? When we find the stress in increment? Yeah, so that would be the uh, stress it's increment. Over. In this case, that is your stress increment also. Yes. Anything else? Okay, sir.
right i seems uh, the doubts are done right okay hope uh, that was helpful uh, so if you have uh, if you need more please request uh, right okay then i am winding up